Hello, today I'm going to be showing how Dynatrace can trigger a pliant workflow, which will undergo a number of remediation steps based on data passed in through the Dynatrace alert. Within Dynatrace, navigating into the settings screen, under integration, problem notifications, I can set up within Dynatrace a custom webhook which will be a listener endpoint configured in Pliant to pass the alert data to uh, in order to trigger the Pliant workflow to undergo these remediation steps, as well as create a ServiceNow ticket and populate that ticket with all of the relevant details of the remediation process uh, and raise the ticket for human intervention only if required. I have a single notification set up for high JDBC load. Within this alert, I have the webhook URL, which we are going to trigger by a client. We can see we have our client API gateway endpoint set up, uh, as well as all of the relevant attributes from Dynatrace related to this alert that we're going to need throughout our client workflow to undergo these remediation steps within the custom payload field. Clicking send test notification, we will see that the notification was sent successfully. Navigating into Pliant, within our logs tab, we can see that we have just triggered a Dynatrace event handler workflow. And we can see that all of these example details have been passed in from Dynatrace into Pliant to trigger this workflow and then undergo these remediation steps. This is the client workflow that we are triggering from Dynatrace to handle this high JDBC event. As we can see within our start block, we have a number of variables that will be used throughout this entire process. A number of them are marked as input variables. And these variables, their values are populated from Dynatrace at runtime with all of the relevant details of this incoming alert. We also have a number of other variables that are going to be used throughout this entire workflow. Scrolling down, what we can see is we create a new incident in ServiceNow, and we populate this incident with all of the relevant notes, as well as details from that Dynatrace alert. We assign a number of relevant variables, and we have our CyberArk fetch credentials block. And so this block will actually go into our instance of CyberArk and pull out the relevant SSH key for that machine that we'd like to undergo this remediation process per the standard operating procedures that have been previously defined. We take this credential out of CyberArk, we map it into a client authentication key that we can use to authenticate and run commands against a host, and we undergo the remediation steps. For this standard operating procedure, we execute a PS aux command and we grep for a particular entry within PS aux and we pull a particular value out of that. The value that we pull out is the process ID. Scrolling down, we then kill this process using kill nine and we record into ServiceNow the result of this kill process command within the same ticket that we had opened before. We then update ServiceNow with comments and working notes that we're, we are rebooting this server. And using our SSH block, we then execute a pseudo reboot on this host. We update ServiceNow that the 15 minute sleep period has started post reboot. And we have a sleep block, which waits for 15 minutes before undergoing any other actions. Once that sleep is complete, we populate the comments and working notes within the ServiceNow incident that the sleep period has been completed. Next, we run a number of commands directly from the standard operating procedure. And we then patch ServiceNow with the relevant details from this prior command. And so within comments and working notes, we have executed our SOP to start the application, as well as the raw output from that SSH command. We then wait 20 seconds for the processes to start. 
And we then perform a verification of this remediation. In this example, we simply run PS aux and we find the particular target process. And we pull out of that the CPU utilization of that process. And we update ServiceNow with the details from that check. We then evaluate if this was a successful remediation. And in this example, we're simply checking if the CPU load is less than 40% for this process. Then depending on if the CPU load was less than 40% or the patch was successful, we update our ServiceNow ticket by changing the ticket into a resolved state with a close code of successful and with comments and working notes that the restart resolved the JDBC load issue. Otherwise, if this issue was not remediated, we want to raise this for human intervention. And so we have a Slack post message block that will post into a health checks channel that a particular issue requires attention along with all of the problem details from Dynatrace. We write into the Slack channel the ServiceNow tickets URL in order to look through and see all of the steps that were undertaken as well as what their outputs were to search for any anomalies. And we also log the Dynatrace alert number as well within this Slack message. The Mattermost API integration is currently in progress and that can be used in lieu of a Slack type message. We then, in the event that this remediation was not successful, we enter a closed code of unsuccessful. We leave the issue in an open state. We comment that the JDBC issue persists and that the JDBC load issue persists and requires some human intervention. From start to finish, here is how our workflow looks. At the end of our workflow process, we will see within our client logs that we have the Dynatrace event successfully triggering the client workflow. And within this log entry, we can see all of the relevant details to be populated from Dynatrace when this workflow had been triggered, as well as the relevant ServiceNow incident URL. Opening this incident URL within ServiceNow, we will see that we have the JDBC high alert incident. Within the notes of this alert, we can see that we have a number of details populated from the client workflow. This incident was created as a closed incident initially before the remediation steps had been attempted. We have detailed comments and working notes for this incident being populated into ServiceNow. And as the remediation process is undertaken, we have all of these remediation steps and all of their outputs populated into this ServiceNow incident. We have the raw output from the start command. And we have the ticket moved into a closed state once we verify that the remediation actions were undertaken successfully. In the event that the remediation steps fail, what we will see within our messaging system, whether it's Mattermost or whether we're using Slack, that we have a client app that will raise this alert for human intervention and include a link to this ServiceNow ticket with all of the relevant details populated from the remediation process. Bye.